for the maid of honor, Angelica Schuyler! A toast to the groom. To the groom. To the groom. To the groom. To the bride. To the bride. From your sister. Angelica. And the hope that you provide. Marriage. Marriage is what brings us together today. Marriage, that blessed arrangement, that dream within a dream. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, it's Rachel. For those of you all that don't know, I'm the maid of honor. And we're still, we're rocking this. We still got the tag on just in case Tyler just decided to drop out last minute, you know, fingers crossed, but you never know. Um, when I first heard we were only doing this at the rehearsal dinner, I was a bit disappointed. They're taking away my audience. This is my one moment. If I don't have a wedding, this is my one moment, okay? But I would say it's divinely planned as I now get to create this cinematic masterpiece for you to enjoy. Mwah. Because I get to take this thing into my own hands, we're gonna make this speech a roast. The Office Edition. Mackenzie, my back pain started so early as a child because I carried this burden of having to style and pen your hair for so many years up to this point. Boom, roasted. Tyler, you drive a Tesla. And not for the environmental reasons. Boom, roasted. You also managed to have a self-driving car get in a fender bender. Boom, roasted. Mackenzie, you have an obsession with many things. Boom, roasted. Tyler, you have an obsession with expensive things. Boom, roasted. Mackenzie, the last words you say on your deathbed will be, and I quote, guess how much money I saved on this hospital room. Boom, roasted. Tyler, there are not enough sticky notes in the world that I can put up for you to remember to put the seat down after you go. Boom, roasted. Mackenzie, one time in college, you got a B. Boom, roasted. <laughs> Tyler, somehow you owned a home before knowing how to work a power drill. Boom, roasted. Mackenzie, people would think you have type 1 diabetes with how many snacks you carry around at all times. Boom, roasted. Tyler, my family only likes you for all the free things that you get. Boom, roasted. Mackenzie, as a professional accountant, you tried to transfer $50,000 from your personal account instead of $500. Boom, roasted. Tyler, the roast here affiliated with you is that you would do this, but it wouldn't be an accident because I think you're like a billionaire. Boom, roasted. Mackenzie, you once thought a crab was alive and I've been the butt of all jokes at restaurants ever since. Sorry. Boom, roasted. Tyler, you're so gullible, you believe that we read the night before Christmas and varying accents. Granted, your German accent was impeccable. Boom, roasted. Mackenzie, you're so skinny that you require a cardigan wherever we go in 90 degree heat. Boom, roasted. Mackenzie, you're so cheap, you wanted to register at Goodwill for your wedding. Boom, roasted. Tyler, you call yourself a man. I caught two catfish while you just caught a stick. Boom, roasted. Mackenzie and Tyler, you all go to bed so early you would miss happy hour at a retirement village. Oh, Rosie. <laughs> no, no, no. Bring it back in, bring it back in. I'm sure everyone's just roaring with laughter right now. Okay. Did it feel great to roast you all? Absolutely. Would I do it again? Yes. But I say all these things to demonstrate what a great couple of these two are. As partners in crime, you will need to fill each other's gaps. You need to be the strength for the other's weakness. And these two do just that. Mackenzie, you look for the best deal, which will save you tons of money in the future because Tyler likes expensive things, so you'll save a lot. Mackenzie, you hate to drive and Tyler drives a bougie self-driving car, so two birds, one stone. Tyler, you treat Mackenzie with gifts to spoil her as she is the most selfless person I know, always giving gifts and time for the ones she loves. Mackenzie has terrible taste or lack thereof of music and Tyler helps fill those gaps of hers. Tyler, you've now taken responsibility of styling Mackenzie's hair and reassuring her that perfectionism regarding work is not her sole purpose on earth. Mackenzie's happiest moments include getting things for free. I mean, who doesn't? We all love it. We're Sunderlands. Now, Tyler, you are the perfect match because 
you had all these free goodies at P&G and then you got another job at the little sassafras place that gives us alcohol. We knew you were right for this family when you came along. Mackenzie can even help you raise revenue on vodka at your new job. She always made a great profit off me, requiring 10 minute back rubs every time I wanted to sleep with her growing up. That's a lot. I was a needy child. Together, you guys make one solid team. In all seriousness, I spent the past week looking back through photos, the good, the bad, the ugly, the cringy, and all those memories just came rushing back. Growing up and still to this day, I wanted to do everything and anything like my big sister. When people asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I did never give those answers like a doctor or a superhero or those cop-out answers, but I knew one thing, that I wanted to be just like my big sister. If there was an outfit or a costume that Mackenzie wore, you best bet I wore that sucker. Hence the beginning of our Instagram series, Who Wore It Better? Mackenzie jump roped in elementary school, so I did. Mackenzie played soccer and basketball, so I did. She joined Beta, NHS, FBLA, and countless other clubs in high school, so I did. She joined small groups and got involved in youth group, so I did. She won homecoming queen, so I cried myself to sleep when not enough people voted for me. <laughs> I'm kidding, maybe. She obsessively read the Harry Potter series, so I watched the movies with her and waited 15 years to listen to the audiobooks because reading is lame. But she inspired me nonetheless. She left Bowling Green to attend UK, so I did. She worked at a computer lab on campus, so I did, but mainly because she scored me that job. My faith began as I looked at my sister's faith and adoration, truthfully. All this to say, I am who I am because of this young woman. For anyone that knows the both of us well, I'm sure you can attest to this statement. I've had friends tell me how jealous they are of Kinsey and I's relationship, a sister that doubles as a best friend. I'm sure our sister-in-law, Kristen, can attest to this bond, as the first time we met was the day Mackenzie went to college for the first time. And I was a mess, inconsolable, and uh, had to get my act together so that we could go out to dinner. <sighs> I know there are no words to express how much I love you and I value you, Mackenzie. Throughout the years, you've taught me how to become a better friend, a better person, a better sister. You get excited about other people's passions and want to be a part of them with your friends. And it means so much to us. You give selflessly of your time, money, goods, everything, every single time. You do my taxes like a baller. You burp like a full grown man. You're simply amazing in my eyes. Now, Tyler, I'm not thrilled that somebody gets to be closer to my sister than me. But if I had to choose anyone, I'd be very glad that it's you. You immediately felt like family, even though it took you a couple months to understand my love language of sarcasm, still funny to watch. You gawked at our nieces with us, you loved Lucy as much as you love Oakley, and you willingly invited me on vacation with just you and Mackenzie. It was great, I loved it. Mackenzie and I had this unspoken agreement that we would only bring home a man if the other person brought home a man so that we'd have even numbers to play our card games. Fortunately, I should have gotten that in writing or um, made a contract, I don't know, something, because Mackenzie didn't listen, obviously. Um, I'm fine with it only because you brought your own card game that we can play with odd numbers. So as long as you're willing to have me as a third wheel, I'd love to join. Everyone, speaking of third wheeling, please enjoy some of my finer third wheeling moments holding hands.
know life won't always be old fashions and gin and tonics, but I know that you two have a heart for Jesus and will always put your trust in our Heavenly Father. With that, I know that you'll be able to face the highest of highs and the lowest of lows that come your way within marriage and outside of it. When all else fails, look around you and see this beautiful community. I will love you and support you in your marriage endlessly. We are here for you and we cannot freaking wait to celebrate accordingly tomorrow. So I have got my watered down bourbon for you, Tyler. Here's a toast to the groom and the bride because I'm a feminist. How do people drink that?